again was the seventh chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke. We read from the 36th verse down through the 50th verse. For all of you that want to write that down so that you can read it later. We read from the 36th verse through the 50th verse. From that passage of scripture, I'm going to take a couple of verses for my key verses for today. I'm going to take the 37th and the 38th verse. That is again, the seventh chapter of Luke's gospel. Verse 37 and 38. They will serve as my key verses for today. And if all of us have that, let us say, amen. Amen. And if you need a moment, just say, preacher, I need one moment. Okay, I didn't hear nobody say I need one moment. I'm going to assume that all of us really do have it. All right. So we'll see there in those two verses. Scripture, it reads, it says, and behold, a woman in the city who was a what? She was a what? When she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, Scripture tells us that she brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. And she stood at his feet behind him. What was she doing? What was she doing? And then we're told there that she began to do what? And then what else did she do? And then what did she do? She kissed his feet. And then what else did she do? With fragrant oil. Again, we're told there that there was a woman who was in the city who was a sinner. She knew that Jesus, she sat at the table in the Pharisee's house. And she brought with her an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, stood at his feet behind him. And we're told that she was weeping. I'm going to stop right there. We're going to we're going to dive more into that. Those two verses here in my sermon for today. From those two verses, I want to focus on and I want to talk about today for a thought sitting at the table with Jesus. My thought for today is sitting at the table with Jesus. Could you imagine sitting at the table with Jesus? Could you even imagine being in the same room with Jesus? Now, if you were in the same room with Jesus, if you were sitting at the table with Jesus, what would you do? How would you act? You know, I think about this myself as I read through this passage of scripture. I, I truly believe that I would be excited to be in the same room with Jesus. I would be excited to sit at the table with Jesus, but I'm going to keep it real with you all. Part of me would tremble just a little bit. Part of me would would tremble just a little bit to, to be in the same room with Jesus and to be sitting at the table with Jesus. Now, somebody may wonder, somebody may, may ask, well, why would you be trembling a little bit? Well, I would tremble a little bit because I know who I am. And, and y'all hear me say this all the time, and I ain't playing around when I say it. I ain't perfect. I'm I'm very far from perfect. You know, I know for a fact that that I have sins, and I know for a fact that that my sins they are great. They are they are many. So again, part of me would tremble, but again, I w- I would be excited to be in the same room with Jesus, I would be a bit excited to be able to sit at the table with Jesus. And and the reason why I would be just a bit excited to sit at the table with Jesus, because Jesus, he, my savior, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he became my propitiation, Mm -hmm. my atonement offering so that I can find forgiveness in the eyes of God. 
In Jesus, he is my savior. He is my salvation from the world. He is my salvation, my deliverer from my sins so that I can have an eternal and everlasting home in his father's house. Mm -hmm in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's where I want to be. Jesus as my savior, as the Lord, he knows everything. So I would have a bunch of questions. I would be like a little child. I would have a, a million questions because I want to know. I, I want to know some things about myself. And again, I want to grow in my, my knowledge, my understanding. I want to grow in my, my wisdom of him as well. I want to know a few things. So, so I would be excited. Yeah, I would tremble a little bit at the table, but I would be excited to be able to be in the room with Jesus and to be able to sit at the table with Jesus. What about you? I hope that all of you would feel the same way. Again, I imagine that some of us will be a bit nervous, but all of us, we have an opportunity today to do as we'll see the Pharisee do here in the seventh chapter of Luke's gospel, where we're told there in the 36th verse of the seventh chapter of Luke's gospel, that there was a Pharisee who we will later see is named Simon. We'll see that this Pharisee, that he had the opportunity to invite Jesus to eat with him. And he did it. He asked Jesus to eat with him. Now, if you aren't familiar with scripture, then this won't seem all that odd to you. A man inviting Jesus to eat with him. Nothing would, would seem out of place here. But for all of us who have read scripture, but not only read scripture, but we have studied scripture, we know scripture, we would say that we know scripture fairly well. We may find it a bit odd that a Pharisee asked Jesus of all people, to eat with him. Now, for those that may be wondering, well, why is that odd, Pastor? Why is it odd that, that the Pharisee asked Jesus to, to eat with him? Well, let's remember that, that the Pharisees and Jesus, they didn't get along very well, did they? We would say that the Pharisees and Jesus, they had a rather rocky relationship. We know that Everywhere Jesus went, when he would teach or when he would perform a miracle, it would seem like the Pharisees, they would either be right there in his face or they would be around the corner. And they wouldn't be there to learn anything. They wouldn't be there to grow in their knowledge and in their wisdom and in their understanding. The Pharisees, they already knew everything. The Pharisees, they were perfect, weren't they? And so they would always be there to harass Jesus. They would be there to antagonize Jesus. Again, like I said, they had a rather rocky relationship with Jesus. In fact, the Pharisees, they despised Jesus. So again, it's a bit odd here. And in return, we, we see in scripture that Jesus, he often had to rebuke the Pharisees. In fact, in the 23rd chapter of Matthew's gospel, in the second and in the third verse, scripture, it is recorded where Jesus, he said of the Pharisees to the people, he said, the scribes and the Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat, he said to the people. He said to them, therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do. But then he said to the people, he said to them, but do not do according to their works. He said of the works of the Pharisees, for they say and do not do. They preach the law, Jesus said, essentially, but they don't observe the law. I hope you understand that there's a difference. You see, there are many people that's like this today. They'll say, hey, God said don't do this, but guess what? They be out there doing that. Mm -hmm. 
Then there in the 23rd chapter of Matthew's gospel in the 13th verse, we'll see that Jesus of the Pharisees, he said that they were hypocrites because, hey, they would say one thing and they would do the other. He called them hypocrites because of their actions. See, as we know, your actions they mean a great deal more than your words. You can say one thing, but it's what you do that proves who and what you are. So again, for this Pharisee to have been asking Jesus to eat with him, knowing that the Pharisees and Jesus shared a rather rocky relationship, it's, it's quite odd here. What was this Pharisee up to? And, and would Jesus, would he go and would he eat with this Pharisee? Who again, he had a rather rocky relationship with the Pharisees. It would make us wonder, well, if we have a rocky relationship with Jesus today, would he come into our house and would he eat with us? You see, some of us, we, we are concerned with that, aren't we? We, we know that, that we are sinners. And many of us, we don't have the most healthy relationship with the Lord, do we? And so the thought of Jesus coming into our home and sitting at our table and we sitting down with him, it can make us tremble, just as I spoke about earlier. Some of us, we may begin to believe that we aren't even worthy of Jesus entering into our house. Some of us, we may begin to believe that we aren't worthy for, for Jesus to even sit at our tables because of what we do, because of our actions, because deep down inside, we know that we are sinners. Even those of us who say, I don't believe in God, we know that something is wrong with us. And so the thought and the idea of God sitting at our table, it may cause us to tremble. And we may say to ourselves, I ain't worthy of sitting at no table with God. Even those who don't even believe in him will share that same thought. Will God sit down at the table with us, even though we are sinners? Let's, let's answer that question here before we even dive into my scripture for today. I want to show you some scripture from the third chapter of the book of Revelation and the 20th verse. You can take a look at that if you want to for a moment. But in the third chapter of the book of Revelation and the 20th verse, uh, have taught about this church. I have done a study about this church. We'll see in that scripture that Jesus said to the church of the Laodiceans, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He said, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, and Jesus said, I will come in. He said, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Now, if you have learned anything from my teachings of the church of the Laodiceans, from my study of the church of the Laodiceans, you will know that Jesus shared a rather rocky relationship with them as well. That is, or that was the lukewarm church. The church that had no fervor the church that Jesus essentially said made him sick to his stomach and that he would give them up, that he would vomit them out of his mouth because they were lukewarm. They were neither, neither bitter nor were they hot, Jesus said. Now, if Jesus would be willing to enter into the home of one who was of that church, I want you to understand today that Jesus, he most definitely would enter into your home if he stood outside the door and he knocked on your door and you opened up the door, Jesus said, hey, I will come in. 
I will enter into your home. I will sit at your table and I will dine with you and you with me. Now, if that one, if that verse isn't good enough for you, I want to share some more scripture with the fact that Jesus, he will sit down at the table with anyone to dine with them. Now, in the Synoptic Gospels, we'll see where Matthew, also known as Levi, we will see where he was called, he was called by Jesus to follow him. Now, if you're still in the Gospel of Luke, you can turn over to the fifth chapter, the 27th through the 32nd verse, and you can read along with me. I'm going to actually take scripture from the second chapter of Mark's Gospel. I want to take scripture from the second chapter of Mars gospel. I'm going to look at the 13th through the 17th verse there. But if you're too lazy to join me over in Mars gospel, you can hold study in the fifth chapter of Luke's gospel. And you can look at the 27th and the 32nd verse and you can read along with me there as well. Where we'll see again that Jesus, he called for Matthew, who was a tax collector. He called for him to, to follow him. And this was a very joyous occasion for Matthew to be called by Jesus to follow him. And so we'll see there in that passage of scripture that Matthew, he decided to have a great feast for Jesus in his own house. And we're told there in the 15th verse of the second chapter of Mark's gospel, we're told there that there were many who came over to Matthew's house as Matthew was having a great feast for Jesus. And we're told that those who were of that crowd were other tax collectors and sinners. There were other tax collectors, tax collectors. They were despised by the people that, that in that day because of the work that they did. Nobody liked them. We're told that there were tax collectors and there were sinners that was in this home that Jesus was in, that Jesus was dining in. A, 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 a home filled with sinners, there Jesus was in the midst. Guess who was around the corner? Guess who saw Jesus sitting in the midst of sinners? Guess who saw Jesus eating? with sinners, the scribes and the Pharisees. We'll see there in the second chapter of Mark in the 16th verse that they grumbled and that they complained and they began to ask, how is it that he, Jesus, how is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? You see, Jesus, in their minds, Jesus was supposed to be like them. And you see, they, they wouldn't be caught sitting in the midst of sinners. They wouldn't be caught eating in the midst of sinners. You see, they were holy men. They were righteous. They were perfect. And they, in other words, they wouldn't be caught dead with sinners. Now, when, when, when Jesus, when, when he overheard what these religious leaders, when he overheard what they were saying, we'll see there in the 17th verse of that second chapter of Mark that, that Jesus, he had something to say to them. And he said to them, those who are well, they have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And Jesus said, I didn't come to call. I didn't come to call them. I did not come to call the righteous. Jesus said, I, call, I came to call the sinners to repentance. Now, that statement there, it speaks a great deal of difference between man and God. You see, those that, that believed that they were perfect, they were saying, I ain't going to be caught dead with those that ain't perfect. You know, people, that ain't, they, they act that way today, don't they? You know, the, those who, who feel that they have some kind of power, they ain't going to be down there with the poor folks, are they? 
You won't even offer a hand to help the poor folks up. Kind of sounds like what the religious leaders were, were moving like. Hey, you know, they had that superiority complex where they looked down. They looked down on the sinner. I ain't going to be caught dead with no sinner. Well, guess what? The sinner was who they should have been reaching out to. Jesus, he again said there, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I want you to understand that in that house, in that room, Jesus was the only one that was perfect. See, in that house, in that room, Jesus, he was the only one that was holy and righteous. Every single person in that house, whether they were tax collectors or whether they were religious leaders, even the disciples of Jesus, every single person that was gathered there in Matthew's house, they were a sinner. That Jesus came to call on to repent. So, so if you dare think that Jesus won't enter into your house because of your sins, I say to you today, think again. Scripture, it shows us time and time and time again that Jesus is willing to talk to sinners. Scripture shows us time and time and time again that Jesus is willing to walk with sinners. Time and time and time again, Scripture shows us by Jesus' own words that he will come in to the house of a sinner and that he will sit at the table with sinners and that he will dine with sinners. Will you invite Jesus into your house? Will you invite him in to sit at your table and to dine with you? I want you to understand today that Jesus, he very much desires to enter into your home. He very much desires to dine with you and you with him. In other words, Jesus, he very much desires to be in fellowship with you. Do you desire to be in fellowship with the Lord today? Now we get back to the seventh chapter of Luke's gospel. We'll see there in the 36th verse that Jesus, guess what? He went with the Pharisee. He went into the Pharisee's house, a man who he likely shared a rocky relationship with because the religious leaders, they despised Jesus. Jesus entered into his home and Jesus, he sat down to eat with him. Now, I want to set up this scene here, or what we're looking at here, again, from the 36th verse down through the 50th verse here. Because when we think of sitting at the table with Jesus, you know, we would think of sitting down at the table like how we sit down at the table and eat. You know, we pull up a chair to the table and, and we sit down in our chairs at the table when, when we are eating with each other. You know, we may think of the Da Vinci painting, right? Where, where Leonardo, he painted the, the Last Supper and we think of that long table, right? And Jesus was in the middle and got disciples on this side, disciples on that side. You know, that's, we would think of that's how it was for with sitting down at the table with Jesus, but that ain't how it was. I want y'all to see here today. Because at that, during that day, when they would sit down and eat, they would sit on couches and they wouldn't even sit down. They would be reclined. They would, they would relax when they eat. I don't know why we got away from that, but that's, that's how they would eat in that day. They would recline on a couch and they would sit. Yeah, it would be a table there that they would be able to reach from and that they would be able to get food off of and eat. But they would recline across from each other. So Jesus, he was reclined on the couch that he was sitting on. And that Pharisee was reclined across the table from him on the couch that he was reclined on. So this was a very relaxed environment that that Jesus was in as he sat down to eat with this, this Pharisee. Now we'll see that in scripture that while Jesus was at the house of the Pharisee, 
we'll see that it kind of happened like how it happened in Matthew's house, as I shared with you just a few minutes ago, where during that day it was coming for, if you had guests over at your house, your neighbors, and y'all may chuckle at this when you hear it, your neighbors, they had every right to come into your house to watch you eat with your guest. They would enter into the home and they would stand around the walls and, and they would actually sit and watch you eat and, and watch you conversate with your guest. That was just the custom of uh, that day. We may find that strange, but that's how the woman that we see in the 37th verse there, that's how the certain woman entered into the home. We'll see there in the 37th verse that the woman who was of the city, we're told that she was a sinner. We're told there that she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house. And so we'll see there that she brought with her an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. And we'll see there in the 38th verse that according to the customs of that day, we are told that she took her place, her position to stand behind Jesus at the wall as Jesus was reclined on the couch. And we'll see there in that 38th verse that, that while she was standing behind Jesus, we'll see there that scripture tells us that she began to weep and that she started to watch Jesus's feet. His feet was, was he again, Jesus, he was reclined in the position. I want you to understand where his feet was, was behind him. It was easy for her to be able to wash his feet. And so we are told there in that verse that the woman that she washed Jesus' feet with her tears and that she wiped his feet with the hair of her head. And we're told there that after she finished cleaning Jesus' feet, we're told that she kissed his feet and anointed his feet with the fragrant oil that she had brought with her. Now, while all of this was taking place, guess who was, who was paying very close attention to what was happening? I mean, after all, Jesus was, was in his house, right? So was told there in the 39th verse that, that the Pharisee was watching as Jesus was allowing this woman to, to touch on him as Jesus was allowing this woman to, to clean his feet. And the 39th verse, we'll see there that the Pharisee, he spoke to himself and he said, this man, if he were a prophet, if he were a prophet, keep that in mind. If he were a prophet, he would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him for she is a sinner. Now, you know, I, from that verse, I began to wonder, well, why did, why did this Pharisee want Jesus to come and eat with him? What, what was this Pharisee? What did, did he invite him for the same reasons that I would invite Jesus to come into my home and, and to eat with me? As I said earlier, if I'm inviting Jesus into my home and, and I'm inviting him to eat with, with me, I'm going to have a billion questions because I want to grow in my knowledge. I want to grow in my wisdom. I want to grow in my understanding. I want to grow in, in my faith so that I can make sure that I'm walking in the manner in which that is holy and righteous because my goal in life is to make it to heaven. That's all I want to do. As I said in my sermon last week, I despise the riches of this world. I don't care about being rich. I don't have to have a, a mansion in this world. I don't have to have a car for each day of the year. I don't need it. What I need is God. And, and what I desire is to have a home in the heavenly kingdom. I want that mansion that, that, that Jesus is building for me in glory that we always be singing about. I don't know about y'all, but, but I want to jump and I want to shout all across God's heaven. I want to party that. I ain't worried about partying here in the world. So, so why? 
Why did the Pharisee invite Jesus into his home? Well, well, that verse there where, again, he says, hey, if this man was a prophet, it, it kind of implies to me that this Pharisee was up to no good. Maybe he was trying to spy on Jesus to, to get some intel on Jesus that, that he can go and run back and share with, with his other brothers that were Pharisees as well. Maybe he would take this woman to run back and say, hey, yeah, that old Jesus, he was allowing some, some woman of the city. Some woman of the night, right? He was allowing that woman to feel all over and to touch all over him. That Jesus, he ain't up to no good. We all right, brothers. We the ones that's in the right. That old Jesus, he ain't really no prophet because he didn't even know that woman was a sinner. This Pharisee, he wasn't like Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee as well. We remember Nicodemus from the third chapter of John's gospel, who, who came to Jesus at night. But Nicodemus, he came there to learn. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus, he wanted to grow in his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding. He wanted to grow in, and have some faith. G Nicodemus, he was looking to enter in, in, into heaven and inherit the heavenly kingdom. Nicodemus was looking to be, be born again. Mm -hmm. This Pharisee, he wasn't like that. Imagine inviting Jesus into your home to gain some intel to work against him. When you yourself could be taking that opportunity to that moment in time to becoming more holy and more righteous. This Pharisee, he did nothing but waste his opportunity. He did nothing but waste his time. Now we'll see there in the 40th verse that after the Pharisee had spoke, to himself those words, hey, if he is a prophet. Scripture tells us, just like we saw with Matthew when he was in Matthew's home, that Jesus, he answered the Pharisee. And Jesus, he said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. I don't know if I, if, if I want to hear Jesus say something to me in that, in that manner. You know, I got something to say to you. <laughs> that that kind of that kind of shake me a little bit in the bones. I got something to say to you. Man. When dad said that to me, I said, oh boy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> now, I want to say to y'all today that if you are ever sitting at the table with Jesus, be prepared to be counseled by him. You see, there is counsel at the table with Jesus. And that is counsel I say to you today that you should actually look forward to receiving mm -hmm. when you sit at the table with Jesus. There in the 41st and the 42nd verse, we will see that Jesus, he shared a, a brief parable with, with Pharisee, with Simon there. And Jesus, he said to him in the parable, he said that there was a certain creditor who had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other only owed 50 denarii. Jesus, he said to the Pharisee, when they had nothing with which to repay that, that debt that they owed, Jesus said that the creditor freely forgave them both. Jesus, he then asked the Pharisee there, which of the two debtors will love him more? Which of the two that owed the denarii <clears throat> Which of the two would love the creditor more? And so the, in the 43rd verse there, we'll see that the Pharisee gave an answer. He was a bit hesitant in the answer. He was confident to say, hey, if this man was a prophet, then he would know that that woman is a sinner. But we'll see that in the 43rd verse that he said, oh, I suppose, I guess. The Pharisees, they never wanted to be wrong when when Jesus would have a question for them. They always thought that Jesus was trying to trick them, but Jesus was never trying to trick them. He was just trying to teach them. He said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And Jesus said, well, I, you judge correctly. This parable, it was a teaching moment for this Pharisee. It was a parable that was of forgiveness. It was a parable that was about forgiveness, forgiveness, which we should understand is 
about God's compassion. Forgiveness, that, that is of God's compassion for us. The Lord, he loves you regardless of your sins. The Lord, he loves you. He will be merciful towards you. And if you move in a manner, as we have seen in our recent Sunday school lessons, if you move in a manner to earn his forgiveness, God, he will forgive you of your transgressions against him. You see, this was a very important lesson for that Pharisee to understand. This was a very, very important lesson for him to learn because this Pharisee, again, he thought of himself being perfect. He was superior here. We see there in the 44 verse that for the first time, Jesus, he turns and he looks at the woman who was behind him. Jesus, he said there in the 44 verse to the Pharisee, do you see this woman? I entered into your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. Now, now with this statement, I want you to understand that Jesus, he was speaking to the customs of that day. You see, at that point in time, during that day, it was custom that, that when a guest entered into your home, it was common decency for you to wash the feet of your guest when they entered into your home because their feet would be dirty from the journey that they had taken to get to your house. If y'all remember when, when Jesus turned the water into wine at that wedding, you may recall that, that he used the water pots that would, be, would have been used for the purification of one's feet. For when they would enter into their home, they would have used the pots of water to, to wash off their feet. Jesus, I want you to understand here today, when he makes this statement to the Pharisee, he is pointing out a difference between the Pharisee and the woman. You see, the woman was in the Pharisee's house washing Jesus' feet. Why didn't the Pharisee wash Jesus' feet when Jesus had entered into his home? The Pharisee had invited Jesus to come in. Look at how the Pharisee treated Jesus. See, when the Pharisee looked at the woman, he would see nothing but a sinner. But Jesus, I want you to understand today, that Jesus, while he was sitting at the table, he knew the heart of the woman that was behind him. Before he even turned around to look at the woman, Jesus, he knew everything he needed to know about the heart of this woman because of her actions. And Jesus will see him say to Simon there in the 45th verse, you gave me no kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. This woman, she was moving out of love. This woman, I want you to understand, she was showing common decency. She was showing courtesy here. She was showing compassion, in other words. Where was it from the religious leader? Where was it from the Pharisee? See, this woman, Jesus was pointing out to Simon the Pharisee, this woman was being lowly. She was being meek. She was being humble. The Pharisee was the one that was sitting at the table with Jesus. But where was his meekness? Where was his humbleness? Where was his lowliness? Jesus, he then said to Simon there in the 46th verse, he said, you did not anoint my head with oil. But this woman who you are judging poorly, this woman who you think you are better than, Jesus said, this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Now, while this woman was being lowly, while she was being meek, 
while she was being humble. In other words, while this woman was being pure and sincere in her actions as Jesus was sitting at the table, this Pharisee, Simon, he was being the complete and total opposite. While he was sitting at the table with Jesus, as Jesus had learned everything he needed to know about the woman through her actions, he had learned everything that he needed to know about Simon, the Pharisee, by his inaction. See, this Pharisee, he there through his inaction had very little love for Jesus as he sat at the table with Jesus. He had little love for Jesus as he didn't even bother to show any common decency when Jesus first entered into his home. How will you act when Jesus enter into your home today? Will you be meek? Will you be lowly? Will you be humble? I hope that you will. You see, if you open the door for the Lord to enter into your home to eat with you, I would hope that you do not act the way that the Pharisee acted. I would hope that you do not move in the same manner that Simon moved in. I would hope that you would be more like the woman. As I said earlier, Jesus, he truly desires to come into your home and to sit at your table and to eat with you. But the question that all of us must answer today is if we desire for Jesus to enter into our home, if we desire for Jesus to sit at our table, and if we desire for, for Jesus to eat with us and us with him, that's what we must answer today. Now, when we take a look there at my key verse there, the 47th verse, we'll see that Jesus, he said to Simon as he was still focusing in on the woman, he said to Simon, her sins, which are many, her sins, which are many, are forgiven for she loved much. But then Jesus said there in that verse, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. You see, when you are sitting at the table with Jesus, I want you to understand that, yes, you can find mercy when you're sitting at the table with Jesus. But at the same time, if you invite Jesus into your home, and if you invite Jesus to sit at your table, and if you sit down and you sit at that table with Jesus to eat with him, I want you to understand that there is forgiveness at that table with Jesus. I don't, I don't know if you hear me here today, but I want you to understand today that when you sit at the table with Jesus, there is compassion. There is compassion at the table with Jesus. Do you want to take part in the compassion of Jesus today? Do you want to find forgiveness in God's eyes today? If you do, why aren't you inviting Jesus into your home and to sit at the table with you? This Pharisee, he he sat at that table, reclined across the table from Jesus. He sat in a house that was filled with God's compassion. But look at the kind of heart that he had. Thinking himself to be above the woman because of who she was. He even thought himself to be above Jesus as well. The reason why I say that is because he didn't wash Jesus' feet when Jesus entered into his house. He did not show Jesus any common courtesy. He did not love Jesus. Do you love the Lord today? You see, this Pharisee, all that he had was his works that, that he likely had did out of religion because he was a religious leader. That woman, she didn't have those same works, 
but look at who it was that received the love of God. It was the sinner. I want you to understand today. It ain't the self-righteous that receives the love of God. It's the one who knows that they are a sinner. The one that comes to God and will acknowledge. The one that knows that they are a sinner and will admit, will confess in their hearts that they are a sinner. They are the ones. We are the ones that receive the love of God, not the one that sits across the table from the Lord, recline back like they are something big when they are nothing. Not the one that sits across the table from the Lord, recline, believing themselves to be perfect when they are far from perfect. That woman, she had no works that she would be proud to tout. All she had were her tears from the weight of all the wrong, the transgressions, the trespasses that she knew rested with her. They weighed on her soul. And so she came to Jesus with the desire to be healed. Where the Pharisee came to Jesus with the desire to move with evil intent. If Jesus enter into your home today, what will you desire from him? We'll see there in the 48 verse that Jesus, as he turned to the woman, he said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. He said, your faith has saved you in the 50th verse. He said to her, go in peace. Let me tell you something. When you're sitting at the table with Jesus, there is peace at that table. When you are sitting at that table with Jesus, there is salvation at that table. Salvation being deliverance from sin. Salvation being deliverance from the world. When you sit at the table with Jesus, you can find eternal joy at that table with Jesus if you desire that joy. Again, what do you desire from Jesus? If he were to come into your home and if he were to sit at the table with you and if he were to eat with you, there is a reward to all who humbly desire to receive the reward from Jesus. There is a reward when you sit at that table with him. Do you desire that reward today? That Pharisee, he, again, he was reclined across the table from Jesus there. He was reclined not as one who had been forgiven. He was reclined as an unforgiven sinner as he sat at the table with Jesus. Just imagine wasting that opportunity. Sitting at the table with Jesus and at the end of the meal, when Jesus, he gets up from the table and when he walks out the house, you're still sitting there as you were when you entered in and first sat down at the table. You're still that unforgiven sinner. The Pharisee, he wasted his time. I want you to understand today that all of us today, we have the same opportunity. You can invite Jesus into your home right now. You can invite Jesus to sit down and eat with you right now, this very second. You can find mercy. You can find forgiveness. You can find his compassion. You can find salvation at the table right now. But look at what many are doing today. We are inviting everything but Jesus into our homes. We invite all the lies into our homes. 
We invited all of the conspiracies into our homes. All of the deceptions, we, we invite those into our home. All of the lust, the, the fornication, we allow all of the sin into our home today. Where Jesus is saying, hey, you going to let me in? We be sitting down at our table with sin and Jesus sitting there in the window like, hey, let me in. I want to come in. I want to sit down with you. I want you to know today that every single person that is walking the earth today can dine with Jesus. Every single person today have an opportunity to dwell in fellowship with Jesus today. As we have seen Jesus, he will come in and he will sit down and eat at the table with anyone, absolutely anyone with an opportunity with, with the desire to give you salvation, to feed you forgiveness, to feed you peace and joy. But again, as I said last week, how many of us desire to eat off the plate that Jesus will, will bring? You see, Jesus, he's not going to be one of those guests that'll show up at Thanksgiving that won't bring anything Jesus is going to show up at your door. He's going to actually have something for you to eat as well. But the question again that we must answer today is if we will eat what Jesus will have for us. Jesus, he said to us, ask and it will be given to you. Jesus, he said to us, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened. If you are sitting at the table with Jesus, don't you be afraid to ask. If you are sitting at the table with Jesus and you have questions, ask those questions. If you desire to gain wisdom, if you desire to gain knowledge and understanding, ask those questions. If you desire to be forgiven of your sins, just ask. If you desire to inherit the the heavenly kingdom, just ask. When you're sitting at the table with Jesus, And Jesus will say, oh, all right, I got something for you. Just take my hand and come with me. Don't choose to be like Simon today, the one who wasted such a great opportunity. You still have time today. You have time today to invite Jesus into your home. So I encourage you today, encourage all of you, invite Jesus into your home and sit down at the table with him and eat with him. It will do your soul some good. Amen. 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 Thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this sermon and that you'll be able to apply what you have watched, that you have heard, that you have listened to. Apply it to yourself and then share it with somebody somewhere. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you're following the Newfound Faith channel. Be sure that you're following today so that you don't miss a sermon, so that you don't miss a Sunday school lesson, a Bible study, or a food for thought. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you share the Newfound Faith channel with someone somewhere.